Well, I've been absent for a while and uh, finally got a, a stand figured out for my lathe uh, so I can adjust the height and use it either along with as a fourth axis for the CNC or at this height for manual turning. And I uh, thought I'd uh, show you guys a little bit about how it works and what I did to, to figure it out. Well, first off, here's uh, some rack and pinion gears that I made uh, on my CNC. Um, these are made out of half inch plywood with a half inch uh, tooth pitch. Um, they're home center plywood. I didn't have any Baltic birch on hand at the time, and I assumed that later I would replace them with Baltic birch, but I just went ahead and used them as they were. They looked pretty good. Um, I've used steel shafts. I have a half inch steel shaft that goes through the full length of the of the cabinet and uh, runs gears at the other end. We've got the dual rack so that the the entire thing wouldn't get in a bind when it goes up and down. It look it lifts at about six or six and a half inches total. Um, and it works pretty smooth. I wasn't sure how it would work with the with the lathe on there. Uh, the entire weight that is lifted including the torsion box and the sides and, and the uh, racks and so forth is about 125 pounds. It works pretty smooth. I wasn't sure if I'd have enough gear reduction or enough leverage on the crank but it seems okay. Here we have the gears on the opposite end of the cabinet. Um, these are eight tooth gears and they seem to do a pretty good job. Now I did notice that when I lift the, the weight of the lathe that that shaft that runs the full length of the cabinet is about 54 inches long and it's half inch diameter. It does get a little torsional twist in it and I can tell that the end where the crank is lifts just a little bit sooner than the far end, this end. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be enough to affect the way it works. It seems it worked pretty well. Here you can see the inside of the torsion box on the uh, end of the cabinet with the crank. Uh, you can see the, the one shaft that goes out of the picture and then the other two with the collars on them. The lower one is the uh, shaft that the gear and the crank are on. It's an 8 tooth gear. It uh, goes into a 32 tooth gear that turns the upper uh, 8 tooth gear which is on the half inch shaft that goes through the cabinet. And then there's an idler gear that runs against the opposite rack That's uh, you can see the collar on in at the top. And as you can tell, that shaft goes all the way through, goes through the center section, and eventually gets to the other end. And of course, we just have a driven shaft and a drive shaft on that end for the two eighth tooth gears. I ended up not using bushings or bearings on this. I just uh, drilled through both sides of the torsion box with a half inch bit, uh, touched them up a little bit with a spindle sander just to open them up just a hair, and they're working pretty well. No more than this will be used. It'll probably go up and down a few times a year. Um, I don't expect that it'll wear enough that it'll ever matter. I originally was going to use ball bearings because I had some, uh, but once I got these holes drilled and decided there really wasn't any need to put bearing blocks in it. I'd just uh, run it like it was. I've got washers, you know, and spacers in there to kind of keep everything from rubbing against the gears from rubbing against the sides of the other gears and so forth. Um, but again, it's pretty slick. I use uh, some small hinges up here and a piece of three quarter plywood underneath the top torsion box that. Uh, and you can see the piece of twine on there. There's a, there's a block at the other end that looks just like this. When I get ready to lower it, I'll actually lift it up a little bit. I'll pull that twine, which will hinge this piece up and out of the way, and then I can start to lower it, and that'll just hinge up, and uh, uh, it'll sit on that three-quarter when it gets to the bottom. So I'll uh, back up the camera a little bit here and let you see it go up and down. Okay, hopefully you can see everything here. I've got my twine in here just to pull those uh, hinge flaps in, so I'm just going to raise this up. I, I leave the uh, handle out of that so it's not a knee knocker when I'm uh, using this later, but for now I'll just stick it in there, raise it up a little bit, 
pull my string. Of course it goes down a lot easier than it goes up, but it's still not terribly hard to lift. Um, I'm going to need to get some magnets or something to, to pull the legs out completely straight without having to uh, play around with them when I'm trying to get this thing to go in place. Uh, but for now I just use a block of wood and kind of push on it and take it back up. Oops. Hold it in place there. And this one, lower it back down on the flaps, and it's back up. Here's a little bit closer shot of the gears. Um, behind the crank here is an eight tooth gear that engages this 32 tooth gear. Right on the back side of this is another eight tooth gear, and beside it is an eight tooth. Each of those right in the in the rack gear. Uh, to hold these in place on the shaft. Uh, I cross drilled the shaft and used roll pin and then just routed out a slot for the roll pin to sit into. I uh, did that on the gear here. I glued this 32 and the 8 tooth together but I put a couple screws in there for good measure just to make sure they don't uh, the veneer doesn't strip off and they have any problems. Um, same thing on the other end. Uh, the only difference on this end these are a press fit in these pins on the other end of this shaft, this is the one that goes all the way through, uh, I drilled the hole a little bit bigger so it's a slip fit because uh, I have to put the gear on after the shaft goes through. Uh, and if I ever need to take it apart, it'll be fairly easy to get loose. And again, to raise it and to lower it. Oops. Try that again. Okay. And when it hits bottom, it sits on the three-quarter boards um, and just a little bit before it bottoms out. Uh, you can't see it really in this end, but there is a piece in this slot. There is a piece of plywood up here that uh, the gears sit in front of that uh, is almost exactly the same width as this slot so that the whole thing can't rack back and forth. It runs, it runs pretty smoothly. With the, with the lifting rack on each side, it doesn't really seem to bind or anything. It uh, works pretty well. kind of dark down in there but you can just make out the the eight tooth gears uh, where they engage the two racks and where it connects to the front of the 32 tooth gear you can really see the mechanism best on this end I'll uh, run around the other end and crank that down so you can watch it work Some work left to do on this machine on the uh, table. Um, got some uh, finished boards to put on it, and some edge banding, and some uh, urethane. Uh, but it's it is coming along. I'm past the biggest bump, I think, and I really didn't know if it would have enough guts to lift the the full weight of this machine. Um, and it works about like I hoped it would. So uh, until the next installment, we'll see you later.